in your story of your marriage where we want to spend some time talking uh, you guys went through a rough patch for a period of time in your in your relationship not too many years ago uh, tell us a little bit about that yeah so what what was happening was about I want to say about two to three years ago maybe maybe somewhere between there there was there was a time in our relationship where um, divorce was a, a real conversation that was happening. Our marriage wasn't in a good place. Our relationship with God individually was not in a good place. Um, and so unfortunately, that was a, a pretty realistic um, idea that was happening in our marriage. Yeah. And around that time, um, we were going to separate churches. Mm. And so I was going to a church that was uh, where my dad was the pastor and my family. We had been there for years mm -hmm. and uh, I believe she was going, you were going to father's house online. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so there was just a lot of division. Yeah. And, um, and then our personal relationship with God was really evolving and changing um, as, as my parents' church eventually closed, um, we both together were still trying to seek out God and find churches together. And um, that kind of led us here to, to Willen and to Wuff. You guys are going to see two different churches. Uh, your family, uh, your dad was the pastor of a church, but you were not going there. The mm -hmm. marriage was hurting because your relationship, your separate relationships with God weren't good. Kind of two very different things. Divorce was very much on the table. Was there, was there something that occurred to say, all right, this is changing. We, we're gonna make some changes. And if so, what was what, what was that? I needed to really make an effort to put God first mm -hmm. beyond my family, beyond my partner, and what that really looks like. Yeah. Um, and that I think really helped me like the most. For me it was really about like reconstructing my own relationship with God. A lot of times when you're born and raised in the church, your relationship with God is is really just a mirror of what you're told and what your parents or mm -hmm. whoever is there. A lot of times it can be um, really easy to just fake it or pretend. It sounds like your relationship with God ser seriously impacted your marriage relationship. Those two things yes. were not separate in any way. When your relationship with God was good, your marriage got a lot better. And that was a big thing that impacted your marriage for the better was just, let's just work on our set, like my relationship with God having the truth of the gospel impact every part of my life not just what happens at church on sunday sunday morning right and not relying on she wasn't relying on my relationship with god mm -hmm. and i wasn't relying on her relationship with god mm -hmm. to hold the marriage together mm -hmm. which i think sometimes happens it's like one person is spiritually close to god and the other one just is okay with that each individual we both have our relationship with god and then our relationship together with god if that yeah, makes sense yeah. Yeah. So that way we both know that as a, as a married couple, we honor God through our marriage, but individually we still have to make sure we spend, you know, time in the word and praying and, and seeking God on our, on our own. Yeah. And so I th I thought that was, that was really, really important for our marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you say if you were to say like one sentence, let's say to somebody who may be in the situation that you were in before? What would you say to them to help guide them or a sentence of advice to, to help bring them from there to where God's brought you today? You're only as sick as your secrets. Mm -hmm. So even the pain itself mm -hmm. can make you sick. It can make you physically sick. Yeah. So making sure that you talk to someone, you don't numb yourself, you don't get busy all of a sudden in all these projects mm -hmm. or distracted by social media or other things like that, mm. really seeking help and talking to someone. Yeah, confronting the problem mm -hmm. rather than avoiding it and numbing yourself. Yeah, yeah. so good. You what said, would you say? You said one sentence. Yeah. Juan, you could try one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but what she said kind of was what I was going to say is you're only as sick as your secrets. Just being honest. Any issues that you had before marriage that you don't get under control or any lies or anything like that will follow you into marriage. Mm. And I mean, it, and it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. uh, once a lie is there, it continues to stay there. Once mm -hmm. you lie to your spouse about something, where you were, what you did, whatever, it will always stay there. And it just continues to build and build until the marriage is literally 
falling apart from the inside out because mm. the integrity of the marriage is not there. Yeah. Well, thanks for thanks for sharing that. That it's it's neat to hear how um, sometimes it takes some years. Sometimes when you're in the in the midst of that, a couple of years ago, you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. And it sounds like you had faith and hope that God wanted to restore the relationship, and you trusted that if we do things God's way, the relationship's going to get better and better. And it sounds like. Because of that, because of your faith and hope in God's way of doing things as opposed to your own way of doing things, you saw great redemption, great freedom yeah. from the bondage and the, the sin that was kind of entangling entangling things before. So yeah. thanks for sharing your story. Yeah, of course.